this is Story Recap. Today, I'm going to explain an action, drama, sci-fi film called The Blackout. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In Moscow, Oleg enjoys dinner with his date, Elena. Their date starts with an idle talk about Oleg's military career and family. Their date ends in a passionate embrace in Oleg's apartment. Meanwhile, in Paris, a plane is on its way to landing when it suddenly blacks out, resulting in its uncontrollable descent. A massive blackout ensues worldwide, leaving only a circular portion with lights. A while later, Oleg finds several drones outside his building that signal their alarms. Oleg, Elena, and other residents gather in the lobby and watch the emergency broadcast on the TV screen. All contacts with the majority of Russia are lost, and the government offers no explanation of what's happening. The vague report fails to satisfy the public. Oleg tries to call his father, but communication is lost worldwide. Major Dolmatov leads the recon team to Kirov's quarantine zone. At a grocery store, they come across several dead bodies. They proceed to the residential apartments, where they find a dinner laid out on a table. Olya, the press accompanying the soldiers, deduces that all the inhabitants seem to have been caught off guard and were disrupted from their daily routines. Kolya inspects the bedroom upstairs when a figure pounces on him, alerting his comrades with gunfire. After taking Kolya's rifle, the assailant jumps out of the building. The soldiers fire on the fleeing man, but no bullet hits its target. The recon team returns to their base along with the injured Kolya and reports no signs of civilian survivors. A month later, there's still no contact with the quarantine zones, and millions are declared missing. The government appeals to its citizens to remain calm, but the citizens are in hysterics. Several religious groups convene, believing the world is coming to its end. One day, Yura receives a letter to report for induction into the armed forces. This disheartens him, since it would mean he had to leave his ailing mother. Days later, Lieutenant Colonel Osmolovskaya, the main intelligence directorate, briefs the soldiers at the outpost in Kirov region. The Circle of Life, the remaining area with life and electricity, is located mainly in Russia and its neighboring countries. Several hostiles are reported to inhabit the quarantine zones, and recovered bodies showed signs of toxin poisoning produced by the human bodies. Osmolovskaya divulges their two main objectives collecting data and going deep into the quarantine zones. Because the population has few resources, they must reclaim their lands. She admits that going into the quarantine zones is dangerous, since previously deployed recon teams never made it back. Still, she stresses that they need to figure out why it happens. That evening, Oleg and Yura are outside just as a truckload of medicine supplies arrive, along with Elena, who turns out to be a military doctor. Her and Oleg's reunion is halted when the alarm blares, gathering the soldiers for combat. On the radio line, Osmolovskaya warns them of multiple hostiles closing in from 3 kilometers away. The creatures give off heat signatures, moving at 20 kilometers per hour and seemingly larger than humans. The soldiers send flares into the darkness to see through it. Osmolovskaya counts down the distance of the hostiles, and as it reaches 150 meters, Major Dolmatov bellows to open fire, just as a herd of bears charges at breakneck speed. The morning after, Yura recovers an injured Oleg beneath a dead bear. With the odd turn of events, Osmolovskaya reveals the sensor's existence to Major Dolmatov. Sensors are individuals who survived the first wave and acquired psychic abilities. She believes that the sensor confined at the military hospital can help them identify answers. At that moment, Sasha, the sensor wakes up from a vision of an unknown being and notices a visitor beside his bed. The visitor introduces himself as Zenya, who claims he was sent by Id. Zenya explains the gradual flow of the disaster, with the first wave wrecking technologies and the second robbing the humans of their will. The third wave will be the mindless human's reign of terror. To prevent it, Id seeks Sasha's help to relocate the mastermind. Sasha screams at Zenya to leave alerting the guards outside his door. He orders them to get Zenya out of his room, realizing that only he can see him. While Oleg recovers, he and Yura talk about their families. 
Yura's mother doesn't answer his calls, but he's satisfied by his neighbor's assurance that she's okay. Oleg, however, has lost contact with his family in Samara. He shares that he's his mother's favorite, but he joined the military to appease his father. Yura is soon deployed to Kirov. Inside the vehicle, Olya interviews Yura, asking him why he joined the military. He reveals he was a cab driver before he enlisted. Thinking that the camera is off, Yura admits that he's not devastated by the tragedy because it gave his life meaning. As a civilian, he was a nobody, but being in the military gives him purpose. He feels no empathy towards the strangers who died. To him, being alive is all that matters. The interview is halted when their vehicle slows, signaling their arrival. Outside, the soldiers discover total wreckage. The discovery leads to another wave of hysteria amongst the citizens, believing they're at war. Chaos ensues as people resort to crime and violence. To re-establish control, the government deploys small recon teams deep into Kirov to secure a foothold and set up observation posts. Traveler Team 7, along with Yura and Olya, gains entry through the woods, while Team 4 with Oleg scouts a small village's perimeter. A soldier on Team 4 opens a truck and gets stabbed when steel rods pour out from the vehicle. His screams alert his teammates. As it gets dark, Team 7 seeks shelter in an abandoned house. In the morning, Elena arrives on Team 4's post to check on the injured soldier. Meanwhile, on Team 7, Yura notices the store across the street with its door open. He checks Olya's video recording from last night and confirms it was closed before. Outside the military hospital, Id reveals his half-cloaked presence to Sasha. When Sasha thinks he's hallucinating again, Id confirms that he's physically there, while he merely sent Xenia via a mental connection. Id tells him that surviving the first wave has given him the psychic ability to locate whoever is behind the mind control. Sasha confirms that he saw the mind controller in his vision, but refuses to help locate him. To convince him, Id reveals his alien-like face. Just then, Osmolovskaya approaches and is immediately on alert at the sight of the intruder. Meanwhile, Team 7 inspects the store for signs of intruders. Detecting no signs of movement, they decide to devise a trap to set up an ambush. Osmolovskaya holds Id at gunpoint and tells her men to shoot if he ever moves. Id creates an illusion that makes her men train their weapons on her, effectively placating her. Id reveals that millions of species like him will soon arrive and destroy humanity. However, Id claims he's on their side. When the lieutenant asks who he truly is, he identifies himself as God. That night, someone triggers Team 7's trap in the store. Before leaving, Yura tells Olya to light the signal flares if something goes wrong. The purple flare calls for help, while the red signals their downfall. The team finds an unconscious teenager on the store's floor. Fighting off the guilt of hurting a civilian, Team 7's Lieutenant Maxime orders Olya to stop filming. Seeing no major injury, they carry him off back to their shelter. Back in the base, Id reveals that radiation transformed the people into mindless puppets. He ordered the irradiation process on Earth, but spared the portion of the planet around Russia. Id discloses that their species intend to colonize Earth because its sun is a young star making it habitable for eons. The colonization started with Wave Zero, a biological attack designed to subdue the planet's life forms. The third wave of colonization will happen when those beyond the circle strike those within. By tomorrow, their colonization ships, called the Armada, will arrive. It confirms that Wave Zero enabled their species to eliminate the Earth's developed race. The revelation leaves the lieutenant in confusion. Back on Team 7's base, the soldiers diagnose the kid with a minor concussion. Maxime interrogates the kid when he regains consciousness. The kid tearfully recounts that he thought he was the sole survivor and went to the store for food. The kid then asks him if he's in charge. When Maxime confirms, the kid pulls out the knife strapped on his pants and stabs him through the neck. Before he could inflict any more damage, Yura guns him down. Just then, it reveals that Wave Zero's ultimate weapon is humanity itself. Thus why humans look like id species. They created the humans, genetically engineering them for procreation and violence, thus becoming a virus that spread and completed their mission earlier than expected. In the quarantine zones, 
The teams detect armed people approaching them. Chaos ensues on both sides of Team 4 and 7 when the mob rains fire on them. Elena attempts to pull out an injured soldier amidst the ensuing gunfire. Oleg tries to stop her, but Elena insists on the rescue, so he helps and protects her instead. The soldiers on both teams try their best to hold their cover, as the gunfire from the enemies gives them no reprieve. Meanwhile, Id recounts that he and Ra were in a smaller ship that was deployed ahead of the Armada. They were to supervise mankind and welcome the Armada's arrival. 200,000 years since their arrival, Id thought he was the lone survivor. Now that Ra controls the minds of those affected by the radiation, he plans to kill Ra and neutralize the mindless puppets but he needs Sasha's ability to find him. Before she could decide on trusting Id's words, the lieutenant receives a report about the ambush against the teams in Kirov. This forces her hand to take the risk. Back in Team 7's post, the remaining soldiers regroup and continue exchanging fire. Just then, Olya fires off the purple flare at Yura's order. In the outpost, Dolmatov spots the signal flare from Team 7, signaling its call for backup. However, more signal flares fill the sky, several purple and a few red. The Major deems it as the beginning of a war. On the way to the outpost, with Xenia and Sasha in tow, Osmolovskaya continues to interrogate Id. Id reveals he can live eternally if no one kills him. Their species can manipulate cells and cure diseases. Id cured Xenia of his cerebral palsy, thus earning his loyalty. As soon as they arrive, Osmolovskaya sets up a room where Sasha can concentrate as he uses his psychic ability to locate Ra. With no expectation of backup after seeing multiple signal flares, Team 7 decides to go where Team 4 is, as their location is the closest. Meanwhile, Id guides Sasha through the psychic process. In a complete trance, Sasha draws a skyscraper in Kirov, revealing that Ra is there. Knowing Ra's location, they quickly organize and prepare for Kirov. The Major demands to know what's happening, so Id fills him in with an abridged version of what he told the lieutenant. Just then, a soldier reports the attack on Moscow and the loss of communication. The remaining soldiers of Team 7, along with Olya, quietly navigate through the ground. Olya hears a woman sobbing for help, but before she can do anything, Yura ruthlessly guns down the woman. Olya screams in despair, but Yura reminds her about the innocent-looking kid who killed their lieutenant. A sudden bout of gunfire targets them just as they're leaving. Quickly dispersing to take cover, the men return fire. Soon, Yura's comrades are overpowered, while Yura sustains stab wounds during an altercation with an enemy. On their way to Kirov, Sasha tells Id that Ra saw him in his vision. He comments that he'd never been terrified in his life before the moment Ra looked at him. It advises him that it's safer for him to stay in the outpost, and Sasha agrees. Meanwhile, Yura and Olya luckily stumble upon a garage, where Olya finds an operational vehicle. On their drive to Kirov, Osmolovskaya asks if Sasha is riding in the other car. It says promptly that Ra knows where Sasha is, and that they cannot afford the risk. The lieutenant stops their vehicles and orders her men to return to the outpost. However, several missiles strike the outpost, obliterating the area in minutes, killing all the soldiers along with Sasha. Osmolovskaya angrily holds Id at gunpoint, blaming the deaths on him. Id confidently states that the sacrifice will save the lives of many. Yura and Olya soon reach Team 4's location and are greeted by Oleg after confirming that neither side was hostile. Like Yura's, Team 4 suffered casualties and is low on ammunition. Their communication to the HQ and the outpost is lost. A few minutes later, the convoy from the outpost arrives, bathing them with relief. However, their relief is short-lived when the Major announces that they're going to Kirov to destroy the enemy's command. Inside the armored tank, Id telepathically communicates with Yura, commenting how the war awoke Yura's true nature, making him stronger than the others. After traveling in silence, the convoy soon reaches the armed mob. They plow through until they reach the skyscraper where Ra is. Id takes a few soldiers, including Yura, up the skyscraper, leaving the others to hold off the mob. When they run short of ammunition, the Major orders the others to follow the first group, while he and the other soldiers hold their cover. Osmolovskaya, Oleg, Elena, Olya, and Xenia dash upstairs. After losing the rest of his team, 
Yura takes it to the rooftop, where they find Ra. As soon as Ra senses them, it motions for Yura to attack. Ra effortlessly hurls him through the building, leaving him to hang on for his life. It and Ra battle using their supernatural abilities, but Ra proves himself a better fighter than it. The team defending the entrance is soon engulfed in flames as a truck of gasoline crashes into them. Just as Yura crawls back to safety, Id overpowers Ra and pulls out a device from his chest, creating an opening for Yura to place a grenade. Ra is instantly eliminated. Just in time, the last group of survivors makes it to the top. Id walks on the edge of the building and closes his eyes. The mob below collapses as one. Osmolovskaya asks Id what to do next. Id tells them to do what they're created for, to kill. He tells them that war has strengthened them enough to become a threat to Id's kind. He recounts how Ra saw that war destroyed humanity, so he created a religion based on love. Ra hoped that war would stop and love would prevail, but their violent nature persisted. Mankind turned religion into a reason for more war and violence. Now, Id orders them to kill the rest of his species when the Armada arrives. Realizing that Id could have stopped the radiation, Xenia asks Id why he didn't. Id admits that he did not want to disrupt his plan. He finally reveals his motive of using them to create a new civilization with him as their god. Guilty that he'd been helping him, Xenia exclaims that Id is not god, but the devil. Id declares that he's the god they deserve. Elena points her gun to Id, but Yura stands up for him. Yura believes that Id is their only chance at survival against the Armada. Xenia tries to stab Id, but kills the lieutenant instead, as Id weaves his illusion. Oleg confronts Id, but Yura defends the alien, ensuing in a fist fight between the former comrades. After Olya shoots Yura, Oleg holds Id at gunpoint, so Id creates an illusion of Oleg's father to distract him. Xenia seizes the moment to push Id along with himself off the building. Together, they fall to their deaths. The Armada appears and lands a few feet from them at that exact moment. Oleg finds the device pulled out from Ra's chest. A walkway pushes through the ship, but no one walks out. Oleg, Elena, and Olya make their way to it, leaving Yura slumped in defeat. Once inside, the device from Ra lights up, and the surrounding pipelines blaze with bright green liquid, making capsules all around the ship pulse with life. Oleg deduces that the liquid is their lifeline. He proves this by firing at some of the capsules, and the beings inside die as the liquid oozes out. Oleg compares Ra's device to the capsule, realizing that the devices are timers to wake up the aliens. The three decide to cut the pipelines that connect every capsule before the aliens wake up. Just as Elena is on the last group of tubes, she realizes that the inhabitants are all children. The three hesitate in harming young lives until the time stops. The alien children wake up one by one and line up in front of them. Seeing hundreds of alien children, Oleg drops his gun in defeat. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.